this video we talk about the nonlinear regressions. So basically, we will talk about the nonlinear functions. And in the next video, I will talk about the interaction between the independent variables. So first, why we need to use the nonlinear regression model? So in the past, we also used the linear regression model. We have an equation that y equal to beta zero plus beta one x one, or we in the multiple regression again linear plus beta two x two. But why sometimes we need to use nonlinear functions? This is because in some cases. The relation between x and y are not linear. Say you collect a bunch of data, and your data at the end show this pattern. Okay, then no matter how you use a linear line, it is this no good to represent all the data. So a better way is to use a nonlinear function like this to rep to represent all the data points. So in nonlinear fun regression functions, so you have a general form like this. Y i is equal to function of x one i, and in multiple regression x two i and x k i plus u i. So if you want to find the change in y when value of x change, say if x one change by some unit. Then what you need to do is to calculate the change in x while holding R the x two x three up to x k constant minus the original value of x one given x one x two dot 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 up to x k. In this case, you can look for the change in the value of y if there's change in one unit of x. So let's take a look of an examples. Your income, maybe a function of beta zero plus beta one. Your age, plus beta two, hat age square. So if you want to calculate the increase in your income when your age increased from twenty to twenty one, then you need to calculate the income at age twenty. So you just replace all the age variable to be twenty, and you calculate the income, the expected income when your age is twenty one. Then you use the second equation to minus the first equation. Then you can compute the effect of increase in your age with respect to your income. Okay, why some why we need to add a square term here because sometimes the age is not is not a linear function with respect to your age, with respect to your wage. So maybe your age will increase quickly if you are young, while when you grow older and older, your increase in your income will be smaller. So in this case. The linear relation is not significant. Then we need to put an equal, put a square term here to capture the nonlinear effect. So in econometrics, basically we will use two type of nonlinear functions. So how can we insert some nonlinear functions in in econometrics? So basically we will use two. The first one is use use it the polynomial. So I will. Write the general form case is y i is equal to beta zero plus beta one x i plus beta two x i square plus beta three x i cube and add up to beta r x i r plus the error terms. So r can be any number, maybe to the power one hundred. Okay. So first, you need to test whether is I really need to use a to the square power to to the power two two or to the power three or up to the power r. Do we really need to use nonlinear functions? So the first first thing you need you can do is to test whether beta two and beta three and beta four up to beta r are all equal to zero, and you do the f test. 
So if the F test shows that, okay, actually all, all of them are not different from zero significantly. So if not significant. So you should use linear term. That means you can just use beta 0 plus beta 1 xi. You can skip all the square to the power 3 to the power 4. Because they are not significant, then simple is beautiful. You just use linear terms. But if significant, so which degree should you choose? So if it's significant different from 0, so I should choose to the power 2 or 3 or 4. Then in this case, you should, you should use the t-test one by one. So you randomly pick out some, some degree, maybe. Maybe I choose raised to the power 4. Okay. Then I collect the data and do the t-test one by one. So I will do the t-test from the highest power first. So you do the t-test, if they are statistically significant, that different from zero, you keep it. If this is not statistically significant, you drop it, okay? So if you drop it, you do the same things for the first to the power three. So if it is significant, keep it. Insignificant, drop it. So until you find a significant value, okay? So for example, if this is insignificant, then you drop it in the to the power three cases and you'll find it beta, beta three hat is significant. So the best equation should be just beta zero plus beta one x one plus beta two x one square plus beta three x i to the power cube, okay? So this is the best equation if you find that, okay? insignificant and significant. So the other nonlinear function we use in econometrics is logarithms. So log function shows this relation between x and y similar to this curvature. So this is y equal to log x. So we will use natural log, okay? So here is 1, log 1 is 0. So first you need to know some fact is that log 1 equal to 0 while log a x equal to log a plus log x and log a derived by x is just log a minus log x so these are some basic informations or basic concept of log and one more thing is that log x plus delta x okay minus log x so this is approximate equal to percentage change in x okay why because this is equal to log x plus delta x derived by x so this is some kind of percentage change variables So when delta x derived by x is small, these two equations are similar, okay? That's why in calculus, given y equal to log x, the dy is equal to 1 derived by x times dx. This is percentage change in x, okay? So in econometrics, we have basically three models. The first is called linear log model. The second one is called log linear model. Finally, it's called a log log model. Okay, so we are going to see all three models one by one. The first one is the linear log model. Linear mo log model means that the dependent variables are linear, while the independent variable are log. So now you need to you need to what you need to know is that what is the meaning of beta one, okay? So what is the meaning of beta one? So if I change the x, if 
the value of x increase okay so what would be the change in y y will become y plus delta y so beta 0 unchanged beta 1 unchanged log now become x plus log x okay so you compare with the original equations so you first equation minus the second equation so assuming ui unchanged so what you will get is delta y equal to beta 0 minus beta 0 cancel beta 1 this term minus beta 1 this term it become beta 1 log x plus log x minus log x okay well we just talk about this log x plus delta x minus log x is percentage change in x so this is equal delta y is equal to beta 1 times the percentage change of x so this shows that this means 1% change in x or 1% increase in delta x this will lead to 0 0.01 beta 1 changes in y okay so if x increase by 1% y will change the by 0 0.01 times beta 1 so this is the interpretation of beta 1 in the linear log model next is the log linear model again what is the meaning of beta 1 so you need to do the same thing find the change in y with respect to change in x okay so you do the subtraction of the new equation from the old equation and what is remaining is beta 1 delta x so here you can see that the left hand side is percentage change in y equal to beta 1 times percentage change in x so this this means that one unit change in x constitute to 100 beta 1 percent change in y okay finally is the log log model so the concept are the similar the interpretation of beta 1 so you do the change in x and change in y calculation after that you can see that log y plus delta y minus log y is equal to beta 1 times log x plus delta x minus log x okay so the left hand side is percentage change in y the right hand side is beta 1 times percentage change in x so beta 1 means that 1% change in x constitute to beta 1% change in y so in economics term beta 1 is called the elasticity so elasticity is percentage change in one variable derived by percentage change in the other variable some uh, easy concept is the price elasticity of demand so this is just the percentage change in p you derive percentage change in p to the left hand side percentage change in q and you will find the price elasticity of demand <laughs>